Hello, friends. Are you guys ready for the podcast? Yeah, sure. Oh, I was talking to the audience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, how dare you? Well, they're being quiet. But we might as well hey. introduce Kyle. Howdy, folks. I'm back, and it's morning, and I'm a little bit tired, but I'm here. Hi. <laughs> This is Jared, and I'm I'm also tired, but I've got coffee, so I'm okay. That'll yeah. help. I'm Myra. I'm also tired, but I'm kind of passionate about our today's topic, so let's move to take the point. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Seth, and I'm just running to run, and it feels good for now. I don't know when my legs will give out, but that was a metaphor, by the way. I was about to say, should I should be running this morning. No, that that would, that would, that would probably be very good for me. Running would be good for you? Yeah. It'd be good for anybody. Yeah. Running to the races. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking in um, in Pink Floyd's The Wall. So, run, my run, fantasy, in other news, run, my fantasy run. hockey team is about to, to dominate. It's about to win its second game, so cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway. Let's Raise go. a coffee mug. All right, so I think this is the first time recording in the morning. That's why all the comments about tiredness and coffee and such. Um, coffee is a godsend. <laughs> coffee yes. is the drink of the gods. <laughs> all right, so I'm here with my with my blasphemous friends, and this is big brain time debates. Jared, you you, you look a little concerned about your blasphemy. <laughs> Well, I don't know what blasphemy you're referring to, but I'm on your side for this debate, so I'm okay with that. Oh, I meant, like, referring to it as, like, this is the nectar of the gods high upon Olympus with the beans of Hercules okay, muscles. Okay, listen, I just finished reading the <laughs> That is literally the best thing I've heard all day so far, <laughs> and I want it to remain that way. I, I just finished reading, I just read, finished reading the Indian and the Odyssey, and my professor is, like, super Catholic, so I think you're fine. <laughs> 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 all right. So. So. Our topic today, summer versus winter. Summer versus winter. And, uh, Me and Jared. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, if, since I already stated it, but Seth and I are team summer, and Ira and Kyle are team winter, so. Ho, ho, ho. Because summer sucks. <laughs> Be- <laughs> In every way possible. <laughs> because we just... <laughs> that was the point. <laughs> because uh, Jared introduced both of them, uh, I think it's only fair for them to make the opening statement. How is that fair? <laughs> I mean, I kind of already did, so... You, you know what, though? I'm confident. Oh. I'm confident in our argument this time, so... All right. Go ahead, guys. Opening statement? Yes. Well, Ira, would you like to start, or should I go with an opening statement first? Um, you go ahead. I mean, I already made Yeah, you kind of did. So. You kind of did. Uh, yeah, summer is hot and sticky, and, uh, winter is cold, but it's not as hot as summer, and it's prettier than summer. It's not as hot as it's saying it's that it's cool. Hot. It's freezing cold. Okay, it's, it's freezing, freezing cold, cold. You say it's freezing well. cold. Yes, which is a detriment, but I prefer it to hot. I think people would prefer being cold to hot, maybe. Well, we we decided to base argument not as much on personal preferences here. So okay. here we here we go. Historically speaking, <laughs> Hist- oh, historically here. speaking, <laughs> historically history major, yeah, and Kyle's a history major too. Yes, yes, I oh, am. Historically Flash speaking, of the gods, bless me. So, do you are you familiar with the movie Black Robe? No, never well, even heard of it. In the movie Black Robe, there's um, a part where it's basically this movie about um, a Puritan uh, pioneer guy who. Um, is more often towards northern Canada and stuff, mm-hmm. and he goes and does interactions with Native Americans, and in the end, they abandon him right before winter. Well, and that's then, and thereby, sad. And thereby, we know that he is screwed because it is about to be winter, and he is alone in the woods in Canada. Although it wasn't Canada then, but like it was it's getting Canada. really cold. It's it was getting Canada. really cold. So we thereby knew that since winter was coming, he was screwed. So thereby, winter is not as superior as summer because. We all know that someone that one of the old Puritans would die in a movie 
if he left stranded alone and winter was about to come. People always wait for winter. People always say, we need to get ready before winter comes, because winter thereby is when death occurs. And winter just lays armies low. Like, have you heard about armies that try to go <laughs> invade into Russia? Russia? Yeah, invade Russia. I, exactly. I winter is beneficial actually, for the Russian populace to keep them safe. Actually. Yes. Let me, <laughs> their <laughs> natural state. Actually, <laughs> I will tell you this. In, in my... Uh, European history class, we just learned about it, and I can give you a few numbers, on, just like maybe a little bit of numbers on that one. So Napoleon went up to try to invade Russia mm -hmm. with his French army, and he went in there with about 600,000 men. Yep. And after they, like, tried to do the invasions of, like, St. Petersburg and Moscow, which I'm pretty sure was Moscow. Moscow they, is Moscow, yes. It was Moscow and St. Petersburg, I believe. I don't know. I, so, I don't think St. Petersburg, but let's keep going with this. Well, anyway, they went... They went around, they did the invasion and stuff like that. The winter came. Napoleon left, came back. His soldiers stayed, but Napoleon himself just left yeah, and came because, back yeah. with one-tenth of the amount of soldiers that he had back after the winter. Yep. So. Yep. Yep, that did happen. Yeah. But may I counter, uh, may I give a counter argument to your earlier point about how people are trying to, like, brace for winter? No. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that sense, maybe winter is itself then a great motivation a great motivator a challenge so to speak for people to actually do stuff to get ready it may in fact bring communities closer together like you could say maybe oh the pilgrims the pilgrims were trying to get ready before winter uh came upon them and kind of screwed them over it maybe brought them closer as a community it was motivating for them to kind of okay we gotta work people we gotta work to um mm -hmm. I, uh, insulate ourselves, we gotta work to make sure we have enough food, we gotta make sure we got enough shelter. So you could say that winter, as a, as a challenge itself, is a motivator for uh, community building or like individual building, like a person living out in the woods is like, okay, I gotta get myself ready for winter. So I and myself, I'm gonna take up that challenge mm -hmm. and as a motivation. So, in kind a way... Like, no. Oh, no, go ahead, sir. Yeah, so it's, so it's kind of like if you're in World War II and you're preparing for like a Nazi bombing to happen over your city. So everybody's getting ready. They're huddling together as a family. <laughs> okay, what a jump. There, like, what you a just jump. Does you guys just compare I mean... winter to Nazis? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Chronicles of Narnia. I know how this you works. Could... Okay. I'm just saying if all the arguments could be analogous to not all your positive arguments can be analogous to, to Nazis, I, th I think I've undermined them. You okay, could do, now, or you could say that, us firebombing Tokyo too, but <laughs> exactly we are we are a monstrous winter, and uh, that's that 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 that's a bit anti-America. I'm gonna stop now <laughs> before cut. I'd like to see anybody invade Montana in the middle of winter. That'd be sad. <laughs> <laughs> Montana, Montana is the Russia of the United States. <laughs> Alaska and Montana, no, yes. Alaska, and Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't invade there because Sarah Palin is there. I think she has probably by now befriended the she, bears that she has. Like, Sarah Palin is not well, not the governor. Anymore. Is she our version of? Oh, I don't care that she rides the bears she, into battle. Relevant. I don't care if she's a governor. I've seen her show. She's a sharp shot. Here, she could defend the state me, with a riff, with a single rifle. Let me give you. A, yeah, and and you know she defends. She helps defend those Russians from coming into Alaska, right? Because they're so close to her house. Although they never said her house, she never said her house. It, it, that was it, SNL. It's, 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 it's a joke. 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 Sarah Palin said Sarah Palin was John McCain's vice president in two thousand eight, and said, and she said that her foreign policy experience was that Russia is so close to Alaska, so she like <laughs> keeps them, they can help keep them in line. <laughs> really stupid. That's, hey, look! That's I can see Russia it. from here. I said, and SNL did a bit with um, uh, I can't remember, I can't remember her name. Um, where she was like, they're like, what's your foreign policy for me? She's like, oh, I can see Russia from my house. <laughs> um, but anyway, you know, speaking of Alaska, another good reason that winter sucks is because way up there in Alaska where it's so cold and, um, all that, um, they literally pay you a thousand dollars a month to live there. No, they That's don't. A, mm, they do. Look it up. They don't pay you because of, to you because of, because oil, of winter, but I think because of oil, the pot, so if you don't die. I think because of like oil production and stuff like that up there, they want people to go live up there so they can make oil. But it's so cold up there. That's a pretty good reason to live up there. A thousand dollars a month through oil.
I'm fact checking you. Ira, you may say any argument you would like. I'm fact checking yeah. Jared. In the vein of what Kyle was saying about how winter kind of is a motivator for bringing people together and individually. Think think about when it's hot outside. What do you want to do when when you when you're just feeling hot? Run, play, do things with friends. No, let's say let, let's say it is like a hundred degrees out, and all you like the the main thing you want to do is get inside. Drive a around nice, town and get ice cream. A nice room. A nice, it's like a, a room with either air conditioning or lay naked in front of a fan because it is so dang hot. You don't want to do anything to produce more body heat. To therefore. <laughs> Well, Ira, let me tell you this. When it's negative 10 degrees outside, what do you want to do? You want to go inside. Exactly. However. In the heat. Yeah, but you also, but, but also, if, if you need, if you have to go outside, you're going to, you're going to want to, you know, get, get whatever you need outside done rather than when it's hot outside and then it's just like, uh, I, feel, I feel like I'm sweating my entire water out. Instead, instead, you have, instead you're actually getting wa wa desiring to get work done, or even inside when you're feeling cold. You know you want gonna want to get the. You feel more motivated to get work done when it's cold than when it's hot because. Yeah. Ira, if there's only some way that you could possibly replenish your water source into your body, I just wish that there was a way for you to possibly do that. And it, and it might even make you healthier and motivate you, like in summer. When you drink a lot of water. Sweat out toxins. Finnish people, see Finnish people have saunas. And saunas, the entire purpose of saunas is to sweat out the toxins you have. You literally sit in a hundred and ten degree room. Is that literally? Yeah, what but those you are also wrap yeah, yeah, but that's also okay. a set. That's I also thought they were just so you could go get it. I don't know. Where you wrap see, I don't know around when you're out when you're just outside working, you're only sweating into your shirt and now you're going to smell bad no matter how much deodorant you put on. That's, Showers? That's why we need to make uh, nudity more more uh, more okay in society. Okay, so yeah, I think you're sharing a uh, No, why house. are we going this way? I was hoping you wouldn't bring up sunburn. Ooh. I actually thought about the consequences of nudity and I'm just like, oh no, it wouldn't it wouldn't just be the boys. I, I forgot about that. Never mind, scratch the argument. <laughs> Where did we you might have think other issues. You were there. going with that argument. <laughs> I don't know. It was just like okay, yeah, you <laughs> summer. Also, and the that problem is there are some people you do not want to see nude outside. <laughs> I'm I sorry, and I'm referring, and I'm partially this... referring to myself here. You do not want to see me in the nude running around outside. So, <laughs> Jared, hold it in. <laughs> yeah, I, I was forgetting that people beyond like the demographic of our room exists. Okay, I, like, I, I, like I, I would like awkward. you know the amount of you know the kind of people who go to nudist camps. There are typically the older generation, you know, people you really don't want to go to see nude. I'd actually be more okay with that. Why then. would I want to go see anybody nude I, anywhere? I mean, and really. of course, you know, they're only around in the summer. Yeah, because 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 then when you see them, it's just like yes, winter keeps just... the nudists off our streets. Yes. <laughs> Great way to turn this argument around. I am so happy with the way that just went. I don't even know what to say about nudity anymore. I'm just confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would. While we're at this temporary lull, uh, I would like to say that Jared is correct. I fact checked it. Alaska will pay you money to stay there as a permanent res as a permanent resident. Exactly. Yeah, you just have money. Not a temporary. Winter, winter, Not winter a temporary has a resident, resident, but a permanent. Winter resident. has allowed you a way to get more money. Depends it's on just how, you think about it. how how useless and difficult of a state Alaska is to live in. Oh come cosmos. on, it's fun. They've got bears. They've got. Uh... Kyle, tell me that when you stare down the eyes of a polar bear in your face. There, I don't. Polar Are polar bear? bears in Alaska? I thought no, it was just grizzlies. The pole. The poles. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have to go into the Arctic Circle to actually see them. Which, I mean, is yeah. in Alaska, but not... Grizzlies. You'll but see I grizzlies. Mean... Big grizzlies? Sure. Grizzlies will be in Alaska and will tear off your face. But if you're Grizzly Adams, you could probably think, become friends that... with that bear. And, <laughs> I don't know, bear necessities of life? <laughs> so odd. I don't know where that one was going with. I was just trying to fun. Just, just jumped... <laughs> I, I was just having fun with that. Jumping train. That was very fun, though, Kyle. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.